Hey kids! Today's Bible story is super cool, and I normally don't do this, but I would like to start today with our memory verse before we do anything else, and you'll see why soon. Let's dive right in. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 and 5. When we love God with all our hearts, souls, and strength, it prevents us from having idols. Some people think of an idol as a statue that someone worships as a god, and it can be. But really, what an idol is is anything that we put before God. What you love the most is your God. This is called idolatry. Did you know anything can be a God in your life? For some people, it's their friends. They look to friends for comfort and love more than they seek it from the one true God who satisfies all our needs. For some people, it can even be watching TV. They watch TV to take their mind off their problems instead of giving their problems to the one true God who can provide help. Many of us have idols in our lives and don't even know it. That's why God gave us Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 and 5 to help keep our hearts on Him. Let's say it again with hand motions. Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 and 5. Today's Bible story from 1 Kings 16 through 18 will show us exactly how silly it is to love anything more than we love God. When Ahab was king of Israel, he was the most evil king of all. Ahab led the Israelites away from God. They worshipped Baal, a false god, instead. King Ahab's evil ways made God angry, so God sent a prophet named Elijah to speak to Ahab. Elijah said, God will send a drought. No rain will fall in Israel for three years unless I say so. Guess what? Elijah was right. God caused a drought to come upon Israel because of their sin of idolatry. Because there was no rain, the lakes and rivers dried up. People couldn't grow crops in the fields for food. So there was not only a drought, but the drought caused a famine, a time where there was hardly any food. After three years, God was ready to send rain. Elijah went back to King Ahab. He told the king, Meet me at Mount Carmel. Bring the people of Israel and the prophets who worship false gods. King Ahab and the people met Elijah at the mountain. Elijah said, Make up your minds. If you believe the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. Elijah set up a challenge to show who is the one true God. The prophets of the false god, Baal, set up an altar first and put a bull on it. Elijah said, Call to Baal and ask him to send fire to your altar. I will call on the Lord. The God who answers by sending fire is the one true God. The prophets of Baal worshipped their false god. Answer us, they cried out to their God, but no one answered. The people danced and cried out for hours to show that they loved Baal. Shout loudly, Elijah taunted them. Maybe he is sleeping. Still, no answer. They just looked silly. Then Elijah set up an altar, dug a trench around it, and put a bull on it. Elijah told the people to pour water on the altar so everything was wet. Then Elijah prayed, Lord, answer me so that these people will know that you are God. Suddenly, God sent fire from the sky. 
It burned up the bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It dried up the water in the trench. When the people saw this, they fell face down and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Soon the sky grew dark with clouds, and God sent rain. The one true God is not like false gods. We do not have to work hard to show God we love Him. Instead, He showed His love for us by sending His Son, Jesus. Jesus died to rescue us from sin, and He hears us when we cry out to Him. He is a God who is never too busy for us, never sleeps, loves us unconditionally, wants to forgive us of all of our sins, and have a personal relationship with us. What a God! Why wouldn't we love Him with all of our hearts, souls, and strength? God deserves it. So let's check our hearts today. Do you love God with all that you are? If not, what is it that you love more than God?